guys welcome to my diana guide video today i'll be showing you everything you need to know about this champion starting with the ability sequence we always max out a q first which is a ranged aoe ability used for damage wave clear and to reset your dash the w is max second because it gives her a shield so it's very useful for when trading with champions e is a mobility but it can be reset with a q so you max this out last all right guys so Dyna level 1, you can start with either your Q or your W, depending on the matchup. So against melee champs, you want to start with your W, your shield first, because it allows you to farm the minions without getting poked too much. Against ranged ones, you can just stay back and skill your Q level 1, because then you can just last it when the minions are low enough HP. So what's important to know about this champion is a passive. So you get attack speed. But when you use your abilities, that attack speed will be tripled and the every third auto attack will be a cleave. So basically every third auto attack will deal bonus damage, so it's really important to make use of that probably in the landing phase because it adds up to a lot of damage. Right now I'm just playing it out passive the first two levels. Um, you can try to poke your opponent with a Q here. If you can last hit minions at the same time while also poking with your Q, then you can make it really efficient. The Akali is a bit uh, difficult matchup in the early on because she's very good against uh, melee champs. She's an energy champion, so she doesn't really use resources. But we just need to wait a bit. Now we have level 3 here, so we have a dash up. So what we want to do here, we got out her W, so now J4 can gang, we can probably take a flash out. Alright, got a flash out. So when you trade with Akali, you want to play around her W, so you fake and engage, baiting out the W, then you back off. And then you can engage again, because then it will be on cooldown, and then you can trade much better. Before trading guys, stack up your passive on a wave. So two other attacks on the minions here, then you have a pa uh, stack passive, then you can engage. I'm just gonna ignite it here, she should be dead. Nice, there we go, pretty easy. Of course this passive also helps a lot when you want to push the wave, so use abilities between auto attacks. So W here. Get a stack passive, then Q for more attack speed, get a stack passive again. And of course it is AoE so you want to use it on as many minions as possible. We can go ahead and recall. Right, so... The mid game Diana build guys is the uh, proto build as the first item so it gives you really really strong early and mid game. You have a lot of tankiness, you have a lot of burst as well. So your all ends will be really strong. And the item is also really cheap so you can get it early on compared to a lot of, a lot of other items that mages get so you'll have a massive power spike once you finish this item here. And the active also helps with the uh, additional damage to the minion so you can push really fast as well. Just gonna poke a bit here, she does have the fleet footwork so she can heal up. Go, so we used that revolver passive right there, as you can see we dealt a lot of damage. We 
We can wait for level 6 here, then we have really good all in. She might have recall right now. She probably did because she was really low HP, so we can go ahead and push this in. Remember your W guys. When that shield uh, procs all three orbs, then your shield will refresh, giving you um, the shield once more. So it makes it really, really good for trading, like extremely good. Oh, she flashed. I could have got her as well because my dash reset. I always try to wait dashing until I have my Q on them because it will reset the dash. You'll be able to push this in fast as well. So, one Q. Use that pa empower passive on the caster minions. Go. No flash on this guy here. We can go ahead and build towards the components. This one, I'm gonna go for this one here as well. The lens, so Akali Shroud. It will not reveal her in the Shroud, but you can see her shadow kind of. You can see where she's moving. It's gonna help uh, when chasing her, but you can't really target her unless she decides to attack or something. And I do have a control ward for vision, so... It doesn't matter that we don't have the warding totem. Just try to poke it as much as possible with your Q right here, guys. Um, the way it moves makes it very difficult to dodge, as you can see on the range indicator here. Very, very hard to dodge this ability because of its speed and its arc. keep poking her. She does not have sustain yet. She will be going for the Hextech on blade. Once she has that, then she has a lot of sustain. But for now, she doesn't really. Just want to poke here. I'm gonna walk up here so she's going to lose CS. I'm zoning her away from the wave, basically. There we go, we got that revolver passive up. you be dead, I'm also dead. I kind of misplayed that a bit. I could have played that better, but it's alright. So normally to play this out better, you want to fake and engage like I said early on. So you take out her W shroud. Once this on cooldown, then you can all in her. So now we have the first core item here, the Hextech Proto Belt. Very cheap item, offers a lot of valuable stats. You get tankier, you get cooldown reduction, you get get uh, AP. And you get an active for extra burst, but it can also be used on the wave so you can push fast. She has some sustain now, but See, I won't really allow her to just walk up and heal for free. We're gonna keep zoning her. Need to wait for our ultimate. Gonna keep hook. There we go, we got a W out. Now we can all in her, we have ultimate up soon. Now is when we want to fight because the W is on cooldown. Oh, Elise is also here. Not letting her take this for free. We also have a jungler with us.
Nice, there we go. I oh, yeah, double buff, that's going to be really fun in the lane. The reason I played really aggressive right there, even though my jungler wasn't there to begin with, is because I know I can 1 versus 2 them. I have a big lead uh, for me to be able to do that. I also have my ultimate up. Go. I'm fine here, I'm not going to die. That's good. Got a lot of stuff out of Akali as well. So it is it's up, so I need to push this as fast as possible. Because he most likely wants uh, double buff specs, so we're just gonna go ahead and recall here. As you can see, because we have this Hextech protobelt here, we have a lot of tankiness in the early stages, that's why we were able to win here. So now, gonna go for the Sock Shoes, for a lot of extra damage in the early game. So these uh, shoes here have a flat magic pen, that means it's very good in the early game because people don't have MR items yet, especially not the carries because they need their AD items, so it's going to deal a lot of damage in the early stages. Right now you can one-shot the carries, like the squishy ones, pretty easy to one-shot. Alright, got out of the W, that's all we want to do here, so now we can just dive under the tower if we want. We just need to wait for our E cooldown to come back up. I'm gonna dive him. And there we go, that's basically how you do it guys. Without her W, she can't do anything. She can't defend herself, she can't kite us. So just spit that out and then you go in. So now when you push towers guys, make use of that passive. So you should build this between uh, your empowered auto attacks. There you go, and now we got all the plates. So that extra um, attack speed and the cleave is going to help a lot when you push for objectives. Yes, we can go ahead and recall. We have a lot of gold right now, so we are super strong. Oh, they're getting the drag, okay. Alright, so next core item, guys, is the Nash's Tooth. It's something you will be seeing in every Diana build. It basically empowers your auto attacks, while also giving some cooldown reduction and some AP. So, Diana is also very reliant on auto attacks because of her passive, so it has great synergy with her kit overall. So it's going to help her keep up the DPS, so she doesn't only have burst, but also sustain damage. I'm gonna check for wards here, scout for some vision. Right, and we got that out easily, we have a Lowry coming in here. Okay, nice attempt. He's pretty fat though, um, you don't really want to dive Ilawi unless you can CC chain her. I need to wait for Ilawi to show herself top. I placed that ward right there because... So, Akali doesn't get um, free gold from clearing out it. The other control ward. Nice. Yep, need to bait out that first, but that is fine here, we should be able to win this easily. We have a Kelly coming in from the other side, maybe she can flank her. Oh, it looks like a good ult. Oh wow, I was CC right there, else I could have gotten a really really good ult off. I think they win this easy, nice. And I survived as well. I got a uh, hard CC right there because I did press my ultimate, but...
I'm trying to beta. I do have my W up. Oh, poor Caitlyn. That's fine. Alright, so when mid game start, guys. On a champion like Diana, you want to be in the sideline, okay? Oh, well. I hope I can make it out. I don't want to give that shot down. I have 700 gold shot down. I definitely don't want to give it over to Pike and Nash. So you want to be in the sideline? Because you can 1 versus 1 most champions in the game and you can also push really fast. So you'll be able to take down uh, towers really quick. So you can add a lot of pressure in the sideline. So I went for the Seeker Sun God here is because it gives me um, Defensive stats, so it's great against Ash, Pike, and Ilawi, so it's more valuable at this time. And we'll basically build that into a Sonya Sourglass. Diana is a champion that will dive and be uh, in the middle of the fights, so that Sonya Sourglass can really uh, buy you some time. After you stop everything, and then you can just uh, pop that Sonya Sourglass, so you buy yourself some time until it's ready again. Nice. I do have a red buff here, we're gonna shred her. Oh, this is why you need to watch out. She has a lot of damage. Now I can go in. So when Ilawa uses her ult, even though you are fed, she can easily win it. Even if it's like a 1 vs 2, 1 vs 3, you need to hard CC her, or you need to move out of the zone. Alright, let's get out of here, so... We have enough for the Sonya Sourglass when recall, so we definitely want that. And the Drake's spawning soon as well. I think our HC is set. Unlucky. There we go. So now we have the core items completed. Sonya's hourglass, guys. You can just uh, dive straight into a fight, use up everything, and then you pop this hourglass here. So you won't get hit by CC or chain CC to death. So now it's when I can go like 1 vs 3, 1 vs 4, use up everything because I have some safety. I'm gonna walk around here, maybe at least we'll face check. I think he's making it a bit obvious though. Nice guys, that's how we do it. Diana, you just want to dive the backline, guys, the squishies. You can pretty much delete them instantly. Your Hextech Brutal build also works as a gap closer, so you can get that extra damage off, but also make sure that you are within range. Can we end here? No, we can't. We should get the Drake. I'm gonna go ahead and recall, because they don't need me. I hope not, because then I can get a... Component towards the rabbit on stealth cap, so this is the big biggest AP power spike in the game. Want that. Alright. We're getting the objectives. Uh, your main focus should always be the objectives. Because objectives is how you close out the game, uh, because if you just keep going for kills, then there's always a way for you to throw. You want to go on the sideline? I'm gonna go to the sideline right now. There's a chance that my teammates will get caught, let's hope not. Okay, they got Ash it seems. Okay, yeah, they did. Nice. So we want to focus down the objectives. That's why I am in the sideline right now. Somebody should defend top though. I 
can push really fast as you can see also take down tower really fast just by chaining my abilities using them with my uh, passive here for maximum attack speed and also the cleave we can push much faster than a Laoi so we don't care about her being bored right now and we have people spawning soon so they can defend As you can see, because I was in the uh, bottom side right now, we were able to get all the entire bottom side. If I just walked up to the Baron pit here and wasted time, then we would not have gotten anything at all. I'm going to clear some vision here and see if we can flank the Alawi. We need to watch out they don't tank her ultimate. She is zoomed though, so she can't do anything. She's dead. Nice, so now we can pressure the Baron. Gonna wait for Pike to move up here. Come here. Oh, that's CC right there. He just swiped with like 1 HP or something. I could have ignited him. But I didn't want to waste anything. We have a uh, set pushing top. I'm just gonna wait here. I think there's probably a ward here, that's why I'm not walking up. Okay, there isn't, nice. Oh, she should not have walked out. I'm just waiting for Sid to push topside. We'll keep playing for those objectives right there. Oh, she just disappeared just like that. I'm igniting her here so she doesn't heal from that passive because she has a lot of healing guys. We can go ahead and end the game right here. Nice. Well done. Alright guys and that was the Diana guide video so I hope this was useful. And as always, thank you so much for watching and see you guys in the next one.